Hello there, I'm Robin Shukra and welcome to the show. You find me today, not for the first time, outside the wonderful cookery school Dancing Trousers, where in the village of Philkins, just on the Gloucestershire Oxfordshire borders. Now, the last time I came here, Alexis Thompson, who runs the school, taught me how to make pesto, and I enjoyed it so much I thought it would be fun to come back. And now I'm hoping that we will do that on a pretty regular basis. So join me today while Alexis tries once again to turn me into a moderate cook. We're going to try a Spanish omelette. Come with me. Well, Alexis, it's lovely to be here in your beautiful kitchen. Welcome and I'm back. so looking forward to this. It's very exciting indeed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as I've already said to you, um, this is all about the business of learning to cook from basics because I am a klutz. I've been here for a little while this morning and already uh, neither Alexis or Ross has stopped laughing at me because I started trying to practice a little in the last few days and the damage I did to myself was substantial. I bought myself a beautiful new frying pan with a metal handle so that I could put it in the oven. I'd seen it done on telly. And then when I took it out of the oven, of course, I left it on the top and then grabbed it. And as a result, I burnt my hand. I think there's a solution, Alexis. There is a solution, and that's a very nasty burn. Um, <laughs> the reason this happens, and I will say to you, you are not alone, because mm. our brains are programmed to say, that's a handle, I'll just pick it up. Yeah. And so your brain doesn't think that's a red hot handle because that's just come out of the oven. So the way that that will never happen again is mm. how you stop, say, save your skin is, Here's your pan, you've got your whatever it is in it that's about to go in the oven. You get a bit of flour yeah. and you just tap raw flour onto the handle and then carefully put that into the oven with the flour on. Yeah. When you get it out and it's cooked, that will have gone dark brown. So when you put that on your hob, and I think this is what happened to you, you put it on the hob, yeah. did something else, came back to it and went like that and of course the heat that's still retained will give you a very nasty burn. You'll see brown flour and your brain yeah. will say, hang on, why has that got brown flour? Oh, because it's red hot yes. and you won't burn yourself like that's that That's absolutely again. brilliant. It's so simple, isn't I it? Shall, it'll avoid a... doing this again. Yes. I'm not sure my hand is going to be particularly good today. I should do my best. We but, shall um, take very good care of you. That's a nasty burn. <laughs> that's, it doesn't right. matter. that's a go. brilliant <laughs> tip. What a great start Off to, to the a show. Good start. That's a fantastic tip. <laughs> Now, okay. Alexis, you're going to show me how to make a Spanish omelette today. I, think, I so. am. Now, yeah. I have to say to you, I call this Spanish omelette, and I think that's a bit of a made-up name. Right. This is one of my most favourite dishes. A, it is a one-pot dish. We're just going to use one frying pan for it. And it is the best way of using up leftovers I've ever come across. Right. You, you basically go into the fridge and you find what's left over and it can all go in the Spanish omelette. That's right. the joy of it. Cheap, very cheerful, good for you, portable... Fantastic for picnics, great if you need something different to put in a lunchbox. The Spanish omelette does all of these things. You, you can eat it cold as well. Absolutely, it, yes, is, it is a splendid really? dish. Yes. Yeah, right. So, I have done exactly that. I went into the fridge and I thought, what have we got for Robin? So, here's what I found for you. I had mm. a few mushrooms left over, a little bit of nice streaky bacon. That's out of my garden, a little courgette out of the garden. Beautiful. And these are our uncooked ingredients, which we're going to cook first. Right. And then these are ingredients that don't need any cooking, but we're knocking around. A few cooked beans from a salad niçoise, so we'll have those. A few little cooked salad potatoes, so we'll mm. pop those in. And look, really, this is cupboard, cupboard food. A little bit of cheddar cheese, so we'll have that too. Lovely. So all of those things can go into a Spanish omelette and essentially put in whatever floats your boat. Yeah. What can you find in the fridge? Bung it in a Spanish omelette. Brilliant. So, yeah, okay. first things first, let's prep up the stuff that needs cooking. So you're going to just chop your little onions, um, onions, Mushrooms, chop your mushrooms, I am a professional, <laughs> chop your mushrooms into nice slices and I'll show you another nice trick because the problem with the mushroom is it does that. Yeah. So that makes it difficult to chop straight away. So here's the thing to do, just Take a little sliver off his bottom, right. and then you've got a nice flat surface. Brilliant. And then you can just chop your nice slices without it rolling around. 
The other thing I'm going to show everybody, because this is also keeping you safe, is Mm. underneath your chopping board is a non-slip mat. So this board will not move when you chop on it. And again, at home, that's really important. Damp J cloth, tea towel, whatever you've got to hand, because with a big knife, if a board moves on a work surface, you're in danger. You start taking the tops of your fingers. And actually, it's very important considering the, the fashion of granite surfaces which that's so true very on, yeah, slippy very beautiful yeah. but obviously a very slippy surface yeah okay. so that's your first job let's get those right. mushrooms okay. prepped up so i noticed you started by putting the tip of your knife down on the on the board is that right is yes that right? now another thing that we can we can talk about is the way that you hold a knife um, right. which we'll do we'll do very quickly do a little bit of knife skills yeah we'll just take his little bottom off and get him ready to go mm. um Typically, people will hold a knife like that or like that. Mm -hmm. Now, although it will work like that, you're much safer if you put your forefinger and thumb on the very back end of the blade. This is called the bolster, this part of the knife, and you're right up against the bolster, and then your fingers go around the handle, and you actually suddenly, you're in much more control of that knife, because in the other methods, it sort of flops around, and Mm. the pressure is in the wrong place. But here, most of your work is going to be done by the back of the knife so it means you're in exactly the right place to get the pressure right and you already i think you maybe have done this before but you've got a lovely rocking motion and that's exactly how you cut the knife is never leaving the board it's not making it's not making a terrible old racket and you did exactly the right thing and then you go through just like this and get those lovely slices so Uh, whether that was instinct or training you were spot on so carry (laughs) on it comes from watching far too much television oh no that's never about but that's actually brilliant because you're actually holding the blade too i can see that exactly okay so i love this idea of shaving that yes shave shave his bottom yes there you go that works very well okay and I'm, I'm, I have a terrible tendency to bang the board with, that's not good for your knives, is it? I'm well, it's, it's not terrific for the knives. No. Um, you, and you don't have to. I sometimes think it's, it's chefy showing off when, is you, it? when you see professional chefs making a right old Flamboyant. Yes, Very flamboyant. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Right. So there's our mushroom ready to rock and roll. Let's, with this courgette, um, you're going to take the top and the the bottom off. And then I would Mm. say, um, maybe we'll cut him down his length and just do nice little pieces. Because I don't want a walloping great bit of courgette in a Spanish omelette. Right, so down the length. Yeah, down the length. Lovely. And there you are. Again, you've created your nice flat surface, which is nice and safe. Is that that sort of size we're talking about? Yeah, a little, a little bit, bit thicker. thicker than that. And I see right. that sneaky finger's gone back into position on top of the... Oh, yeah, so you right. see. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody does it. It's quite well, all right. I shall do my best to become a good student. <laughs> but, uh, very okay. good, very good. It's interesting, that thing of um, sticking one's finger out of things. It's a bit like... A cup of tea, isn't it? Really? Yes, indeed. Right, <laughs> so let's lose the top and the bottom, which are in there somewhere, aren't they? Oh, there right, we are. Yeah. Put those in our rubbish bowl. Now, right. this is this is a simple thing that makes cooking at home much easier. Mm. We've got a bowl for our rubbish. Yeah. Because when you cook at home, the tendency is every time you've got a bit of something to throw away, you leave where you are, you walk over to the bin, you throw it away, you come back. And there's lot if you if you if we got Ross to film you in real time, you'd be doing this and doing that yes, and doing this absolutely. and doing, have a bowl on the table for the rubbish. Yeah, and then it brilliant. all goes in there, and then you stick that in the in the compost bin at the end. Much yeah, simpler. Absolutely brilliant. Because I'm I'm a, a, a great believer in keeping the surroundings tidy because that does make a big difference. It does make a big a, difference, a and that's and it's a very good practice to get into. Keep right. your surface nice and nice and tidy. Okay. Now your final thing is this lovely streaky bacon. I had a few bits left over, so I thought we'll have those for Robin's Spanish omelette. Mm-hmm. With this, I think the easiest thing in the world is kitchen scissors because right. bacon tends to stick to a knife. Mm-hmm. So nice sharp pair of kitchen scissors and with this I would say if we do them pieces about that size right so you okay. can snip that lot up that's I'm lovely sure that thing. and while you're doing that I'm going to get you a dough scraper and you're going to think why do I need a dough scraper and I'll show you I'm not sure I even know what a dough scraper oh, is right. a dough right. scraper is one of those oh, and I'll right. show you okay. why that's going to be useful in a minute right okay Right, so I'm going to get our little 
pan on the go. So we'll just wait for that to heat up a little bit. So all of these things are the things that need cooking. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to use one saucepan. We're going to cook them in this and make our omelette in this. It makes life so much easier. Right. Um, so we just let that heat up a little bit. They we, already look beautiful. <laughs> I know. Sure. I just, oh, well, the colours are very pretty, aren't they? Mm. We've got some nice contrasting colours going on. Mm. So I'm only going to put a tiny bit of oil into this pan for you because the bacon will release a bit of fat. Not a huge amount, but a bit. So let's right. pop a little okay. bit of oil in there. So we've got a nice little bit of olive oil, so we'll put a, a spot oh. in. <laughs> Can we just um, stop there a second? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so a small amount, a very small, small amount, amount of oil. Small amount of oil, yeah. um, and we'll just start heating that up. Now, the reason I got the dough scraper out is because how would you get this into the pan? If you were at home and I wasn't watching you, you've yeah. chopped your stuff up, what would yeah. you do now to get it into the pan? Actually, in a rather um, unclumsy way, I'd probably take the pan to this and just okay. scrape it in. It's probably yes. what i Yes, and do, normally I... what happens is people's lovely sharp knife gets involved yes. at this stage, and they, they, and they do, do that, that. Yeah. which is terrible for the blade of the knife. Yeah. So I am recommending to you the Marvelous Stove Scraper, which is such a useful implement in the kitchen. It's just a plastic scraper yeah. with a slightly beveled thin edge, because the joy of this is you can get underneath everything that you need and yeah. just take it in one go over to your pan. So that's exactly what we're going to do, Chef. You're that's going to get the bacon brilliant. in to start with. Let's get that all over there. Right, In lovely. it goes. Lovely. Oops. There we go. And I've given you a nice little silicon spatula. You can just start giving that a little shuffle round. Right. Okay. Perfect. Right, oh, wonderful smell already. Now that is going to take slightly longer to cook than the rest of it, but what we're going to do is because this is a nice speedy dish, we're kind of going to get everything in at the same time. Right. So that's underway, which means it's releasing a little bit more fat. Let's get those mushrooms in. Right. Because I know it might look like quite a lot at the moment, but they will disappear, as you know, they'll disappear to nothing. They do, they, they yeah. release a lot of moisture. Yes, so, so we'll get yeah. those in and you can start okay. giving those a nice little turn around with your spatula. And then we'll put the courgettes in last of all. Right. Now, good practice, you should really be hanging on to that with it, that's okay. it. So again, that will move around and you yeah. just want to be safe always when, when you're cooking. Whenever there's heat involved, you need sharp things in heat, you just want to stay nice and safe. These are great tips. These are great tips. <laughs> I don't want any more incidents. I don't want you to damage yourself. Not on my watch, Not anyway. On watch, exactly. Right, let's get that in. Yep, yeah, perfect. In they go. See already, look at those colours. Don't they look pretty? They really do. That's it's absolutely beautiful. My courgettes were funny this year in the garden because they didn't do anything for ages. It's been such a funny summer for yeah. food vegetables. Yeah. And now, suddenly, at this stage, they're going mad, which is rather late, but it's okay. We forgive them. Well, it's rather lovely to have these ti uh, tiny courgettes like that. I know, little baby it's courgettes, very which you nice. can pay a fortune for yeah. in the shop. So, yeah. there we go. So, what we're looking for is to crisp the bacon up and to get the mushrooms so that they've got a nice bit of browning going on and that they've released most of their moisture. Now you can see how much moisture is coming from the vegetables. Right. All that steam is telling you that's their water being released. Right. And we want to try to get rid of as much of that as we can because it will make your own a little bit soggy otherwise. Right. So, a little okay. bit more stirring, Chef. Let's keep, mm. that, keep that going. Lovely. And then once we've done that, we shall get on with the, with the um, other prep of the ingredients that don't need the cooking. Yeah, okay. So that, the next thing, we've, we've done a little bit of cooking yes. um, uh, with the magic of television off air. That's taken about two and a half minutes, yes, roughly. Yes, no, no more than um, that. And the, and the amount of steam coming off is diminished. Yes. And therefore that shows less moisture in the yes. thing. You've got rid of quite a lot of the moisture. And also the, the mushrooms have done that thing of disappearing to I'm nothing. Sure, sure, so yeah, yes, okay. so we know that that's now had a nice bit of cooking. And actually mm. that will continue to cook. There'll be enough heat still in the pan. It's quite a heavy bottom pan. Yep. But that will carry on doing a bit of cooking while you do the next part. Right. Right. So okay. now we move on to the ingredients that are already cooked that just need to be prepped for size. Mm. So tomatoes out of the garden as well. Um, and I think with these, if I may demonstrate what we're yeah, going please. to do with one. 
So, um, now, you may think I'm being pernickety, but I pride myself on pernickety <laughs> Not even sure if that's a word. Well, well, I don't, <laughs> well let's invent it. <laughs> I don't like the core in tomatoes. I right. just think it's lazy when people don't take the core out. I don't want to chomp on a green bit. So, all I'm going to get you to do is very carefully just take the cores out, put them into our rubbish bowl, and then right. that's much nicer to eat. And I think probably quarters is Quarter. what we're after. Okay. So, there you go, sir. Lovely. So, take the... Oh, I just... First of all... This, yes, take I'm that. Sorry. Yes, little first wedge. Of all, take so, the carefully, okay. carefully. That's it. Only there we go. Perfect. It's like carpentry, really. Exactly. There we go. Okay. Beautifully done. A mitred corner on your tomato, or whatever <laughs> it is. You can tell I don't know about carpentry. No, well, I don't either. Like now, oh, some well, of the, There you go. You see, isn't that perfect? Isn't that it hasn't beautiful. even got one. There we go. Okay. See, I grow only the best. Only the best. That's brilliant. These are lovely, actually. They're These nice are... little toms, aren't yeah. they? Really nice. So oh, well, it has a little bit of a one, so it's just so that I can yes, practice. Yes, there you go. Practice your wedge. Just carefully does it. Perfect. There we go. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. this Particularly is in a salad, I think taking the core out really elevates a salad. To yeah. Just, just yeah. more delicious, nicer to eat. There's something rather wonderful, flattering about, about taking that kind of trouble for your guests yes. as well. Because it? it is part of the whole process. It is part of the whole process. Yeah. And when I was training, I remember that one of the things I, I've, I was really impressed upon me is that people eat with their eyes first. Yeah. So that even if you're cooking at home and it's for, you know, family, serve it beautifully. Put mm. a bit of garnish on. If you've slopped the soup on the side of the plate, just clean it just off. Just clean it off, it exactly. It takes exactly. a moment, doesn't yeah, it? Absolutely. So, Right, lovely tomatoes ready to go. So exactly so, you can move those to the side. Here are my little cooked green beans. So I would say with these, Robin, probably into pieces about an inch long. So you right, can do a okay. few at a time. And let's yeah. just get those into inches. That's grand. No, no need to take any of the ends off. Oh, like no. That. The no, tiny little... I always top them, but I don't bother with the tails okay. because the tails are just a bit more of bean, aren't they? So well, that's indeed. It. Absolutely. There we go. Perfect. Like lovely. Bit more colour. Yeah. And then last but not least of our cooked ingredients, we've got these lovely little salad potatoes. So again, it's your choice. I tend to quarter rather than slice because the slices fall to pieces a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's your choice though, sir. You okay. decide. No, I, I, I like that idea. I know that I usually do slice potatoes and you're absolutely right. The slivers start they dropping to pieces. They just fall bits, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Um, so this gives some texture. I'm nearly managing to re refrain from putting my finger on the top of the knife. No, you've done very well, very well. <laughs> and the joy of this is we've now got a little bit of carb in there. So actually we really are covering all the food groups. We've yeah. got the protein from the eggs, a little bit of carb, lots of fibre, uh, a little bit, a bit of extra protein from the bacon, but this is also a delicious vegetarian dish. You can very easily make it without any Just meat. Just remove it. So, yeah. Perfect. So yeah. that's all good to go. So the very uh, last thing is a little bit of grated cheese. So there it is, the very end of some cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. And if you do it on the broad side of the grater, that's fine. And we'll use all that cheese up, Robin. Okay. It's the perfect thing to do. This is, this is why I love this dish. It's sort of, mm. I call it a cupboard meal. You see what there is knocking about in the cupboard <laughs> and then you make it, you with, it. With, with what you've Well, got and to. so many times that's what's important. And if one can yeah. do that reasonably quickly, then that's... Uh, yes. So, okay, I'm going to be left with a couple of small lumps of cheese. No, here. that's and fine. If you if you just run those down the outside, I mean, they'll probably melt in, so that's, yeah. but, you know, if they're really big, well, you could, could do just one. do a couple more turns on there. All right. That's I'll perfect. Just do, Let's do one of those. Perfect. Okay. Right. As they say, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. No, well, no. So, here we go. <laughs> so, nice fresh eggs, and yeah. um, we are going to use four because we're going to make a reasonably generous portion of omelette. Mm. So, uh, what I would like you to do is um, crack them before you put them in the big bowl. We're going to crack them individually into this smaller bowl, and there is a good reason for that. I'm going to get the right. grater out of the way. And the okay. reason is, if you crack it and you get a bit of shell in, if you've put them all straight into this bowl, you're then chasing a tiny bit of shell round a really large quantity of eggs. Yeah. And also, if there's anything about these eggs we don't like, I can't imagine there would be, but if an egg had gone over, yeah. if you add it all to the main bowl, you've then ruined all of the eggs by mm. cracking them straight into the big bowl. Yeah. So if we do them one at a time, we're quality control checking as we go. That makes eminent so, sense. There so, we go. And so, I, I mean, I grew up at a time when collecting he eggs from the from the hen hutch meant mm. that sometimes you find one that might have been there for 
goodness knows. Uh, exactly, and many people have chickens. Yeah. I, I used to have um, chickens and they were a great delight to me, except they ate my garden. Well, that's um, and that's why I had to stop having them, but they are rather joyful creatures and I will definitely mm. have them again. So, I'm making you a bit of space. Right. So, there we go, sir. And there's your rubbish bowl, as we discussed earlier, nice okay. and handy for the shells. So, off we go. Now, Whole egg. in my... Um, it, it, hopelessly amateurish kind of cooking I've done before. I used to, used to use a table knife just to crack the egg with. Yes, I've seen quite a lot of people do that. that. I'm not mad on it because not. I think that cracks shell into the egg. Okay. So I just wrap it on the side of a thin ringed bowl and then, and then split it. Exactly. Perfect. Like there we okay. go. Look at that. So that's good. That one that will go one in the big bowl. Yeah, yeah, we're happy with that. Quality control check. Okay. And a small piece of shell. Right, where's, the is belt. that a bit of shell? Is that shell? a shell? I think that's a bit of shell, isn't it? Oh, no, I think it's a little actually. bit of cheese from your finger. I think we're all right. Okay. We're passing that one. <laughs> there we go. Right. I ought to put a piece of shell in here just to demonstrate. Just to demonstrate. Right? Oh, but, uh, you're being too good. You're being, being too, too, too effective. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's it. We, Four we, beauties. We right, that. in it goes. Lovely. Perfect. Now, I am going to add to that half an eggshell full of water, right. just to thin it down a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You never add milk to an omelette, you only add milk to a scrambled egg mixture. Oh, right. So, I'm going to add just a little bit of water. There we go, that'll do. Now, mm. you've got a nice silicon bottomed whisk there. If you want right. to give that a good old whisk round. Okay. Now this obviously mixes everything, but does it put a bit of air in there as well? Is that I, I suppose really? it does. I mean, we're not too worried about it being airy. That looks right. good. Okay. Now, as ever, we need to season. So I have got for you nice cracked black pepper and mm -hmm. sea salt. So a nice pinch of both of those. And in there, I've given you a mixture of marjoram and oregano, just for a little bit of herbiness. Lovely. If you had some fresh herbs kicking around, a little bit of parsley would be lovely. Yeah. But dried herbs on this occasion, absolutely fine. And as I say, it is a cupboard dish. So we yeah. have that in the cupboard. Okay, brilliant. So season away, sir. So a pinch of salt. Now, I seem to remember that the last time I was in this kitchen, you told me that there's a difference between my normal normal pinch yes. and a proper pinch. Uh, well, right? indeed. So, so I'm supposed to use three fingers, That's it, that right? yes. So like that? Yes, maybe not quite as much oh, that because it's not a much. huge quantity. That's good. Yeah, that, go that sort of thing. In, yeah, lovely. There. In it goes. Perfect. Right. And then just as much pepper as you like it. Just a, yes, little, okay. a little bit of pepper for piquancy. Okay. Lovely. Very nice. And then however much of the mixed herbs you would like. Well, I'd like to use all of that. Good. So, so would I. Like. Stick it yes. in. Great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Brilliant. Right, another whisk round. Right. Right. So, and now into that, we're going to put everything else. So, if you would like to gently, with your dough scraper, mm -hmm. you can lob in your vegetables and uh, right. your okay. beans and your tomatoes. Oh, no, it's oh, into, the, into, the, into, the, into oh, the egg. Oh, I'm mixture. sorry. No, I'm it's quite all right. Do you know what? You actually, it wouldn't have mattered if you put them in there. This right. is my method, but do you know what? It would have been fine. It doesn't matter at okay, all. Okay, but this is interesting. So, it actually gets into coating of egg it, and yeah. all that kind coats of thing. Coats it really thoroughly. Nice right, idea. this one's in and next. Well. There we go. I love the idea of these. Oh, look, I've just dropped Quite all right, a bit of extra seasoning. There we go. It's yes, fine. That's <laughs> we don't worry about anything in dancing trousers, you see. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's, why, that's why our logo is a little splat, because what's the oh, worst I thing see. that could happen? You drop it on the floor. We'll yeah, make another one. We'll do it right. Now, with these, because they are a little bit bigger, I'm going to make you just chop those up a bit, because okay. they may not melt in the time that yeah, they need. Okay. Perfect. Look at that lovely finger. Look Ooh. at that. <laughs> He's got it. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Right, <laughs> lovely. Pop now the egg in as well. That's it. All of that From goes the home into straight. The yep, lovely. Wonderful. And not a right. drop of wastage. No, see. lovely. So, quick little stir round. I'm mm -hmm. going to get this going for you. So we've got our cooked ingredients ready to go, and just in the time that they've been sitting in the pan, we've got that nice dryness to them. The mushrooms are perfectly cooked and nicely dried out. Right. Right. Lovely. So here comes the fun. I'm going to swap sides with you. Right. La, 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 la. Okay. You're going to take that lot, mm -hmm. and whenever you're ready, you're going to gently tip it into the saucepan. Just pour it into there. And let's move okay. that out of the way. There we go. We don't need to add any more fat, but if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of butter in, but because we had a bit of oil for cooking up the bacon and so forth, that yeah. would be fine. Lovely, That's right, wonderful. scoop it all out, waste not, want not. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, come on, there's a bit of cheese left in there. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yes, uh, that's the perfect. nice thing about wastage. I, I, as, as I've already told you, I watch a lot of television Indeed. of this kind of thing, and I'm amazed by how right. much it says to be wasted. Shuffle a little bit just to get everything nicely it's underneath the level of the... That's it, exactly so. Right. There you go. Yep. And then we'll just wait for a moment for the heat to start doing its work. And then I'm going to get you, un unlike a French omelette where you would be flopping it backwards and forwards in the pan, we're mm. going to do a little bit of that, but it doesn't require quite as much moving around. Right. But okay. you can start to just gently, can you see where the egg's cooking? We can see it going already. Yeah. So just gently give it a, a give it a stir around, coming in for, that's it, Put perfect. In from the edges. Yeah, right, in from okay. the edges. There we go. And that's it. Lovely. Is that the sort okay, of thing you yeah, have in mind? that's grand. There we go. That's it, perfect. And then the other thing that you can do when you're doing something like this is just use the edge to come down and keep that free around right, the edge okay. like that. Now, while you're keeping an eye on that, I'm going to put the grill on because we'll finish it by just popping it very briefly under the grill to get the top cooked. So right, I see. That. Okay, that stops the bottom burning and cooks the top. Exactly. Okay. So this will only take a couple of minutes, really won't take all that long. Look at that, full of lots of lovely things. It does look wonderful, I must say. There we go. And there we go, egg always tells you what's happening, that's the joy of cooking with eggs. So we can mm. see that's all starting to set up, so I think you can, you can stop shuffling now, that's right. good. And maybe just slightly spread out some of those top pieces a little bit, that's it, out to the edges so that all the portions have got nice equal quantities of delicious things. Perfect. There we go. Mm -hmm. Looking good. There we go. Wonderful. There we go. So I would say that's probably a minute more on the hob and then we will just, by which time that grill will be ready to go nice and then more. we'll pop it under there. Okay. Perfect. So, that's had a couple of minutes. I think that's had enough time cooking from underneath Robin. So what we're going right. to do now is just quickly put it under a, a hot grill, but really just for a moment. So okay. off you go, sir. That's it. Steady as you go. Under there, just yes, under, under there. Okay. And we'll just right. keep a nice eye on it because it egg cooks very quickly. The other quality that egg has, which can sometimes catch you out in the kitchen, is even when you've turned the heat off, the egg goes on cooking. Right. So scrambled eggs is a typical example. People mm. have it beautiful soft and fluffy they turn the heat out they turn around to make a piece of toast and it's bullets and by it's the time they turn right, back yes, yeah. so my rule with scrambled eggs is always turn it off about half a minute before it's reached the consistency you want yeah because okay. they can be they can yeah. be a bit cheeky like that yeah. so what you can see actually is it now puffs up rather attractively yeah. when it's under the grill the heat gets the egg to sort of puff up and look pretty mm -hmm. um, so really that won't be long at all Shall we get a plate and then we've got something I think to, that's a good to idea. serve it on? So. So there it is. It's been in the uh, under the grill for well, just a minute and a half. A couple of minutes, minutes yes, to, no just more. Just to watch for that, um, yeah. the, the, the completion. And what yes. you've said is that there is a problem because when eggs do suddenly turn to being exactly what they want, they will go on cooking. They, will go, careful, they so. will go on cooking. You have yeah. to have a care with eggs. Um, mm. And you can you see it's puffed up rather prettily very as well. Nice. So it very looks beautiful. very nice. And I thought what we'd do is um, serve it with a little bit of a green leaf salad. So we've got some baby spinach leaves and a little bit of rocket. Yeah. But a salad is naked without a little bit of something on it absolutely and so I'm going to show you the easiest way in the world to dress a little bit of salad which takes about 15 seconds so right. very nice virgin olive oil extra virgin olive oil nice and dark and peppery so you're going to give it a nice little sprinkle of that right. and then you're going to squeeze uh, a fresh lemon over the top so give it a sprinkle right. with okay. that first Robin yeah. Oh, just a nice little glossing, perfect. I love those squeezy bottles. These are good. They're very this controllable and very useful yeah, indeed. really useful because quite yeah. often the top of actual oil bottles don't even have a dropper system, no. so it'll come out in a right old rush. No, absolutely. No, right, we've got you a nice sense. clean board, so we've changed your board and your knife over. Right. Cut your lemon through the middle that way. Right. Oh, lovely finger, look at that, perfect. <laughs> and then all you're going to do to dress this salad is just squeeze half a lemon through your fingers so that you're catching any pips that come out in your hand. Right, okay. And that's the world's easiest salad dressing right there. Mm. Just a nice little covering. There you go, perfect. Look at that, okay. spot on. Now, here's the other I thing. Do. 
you don't throw this away. Shall I tell no. you what you do with this? Right. Once you've used a lemon and you've got a half lemon shell, you prong it onto one of the prongy bits of your dishwasher when you set your dishwasher going. Right. And it cleans the inside of your dishwasher and it leaves everything extra sparkly. You put your tablet in as usual, but you put the half a lemon shell in too. Well, I'm blessed. There you go. That's the Best fruit brilliant. on the planet, the lemon. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So, here's our lovely Spanish omelet. You made it, sir, so I right. think you should serve it. So, you know, maybe a nice, decent wedge. It's a nice wedge. Okay. Yep, there we go. Nice plastic spatula to cut with because you don't want to spoil yep. your pan with a, using anything too harsh and abrasive. No. So I'll make like a simple and take a quarter. There we around. go. Lovely. And then go down the side. That's it. Perfect, perfect. Right, so it's even going to come off perfectly. Absolutely, there we go. Very careful. Oh, I'm not going to get it quite. Oh, it doesn't matter. Pop it oh, on. There, there we go. go. There we go. Lovely. Very nearly. Oh, it's a lovely fizzing noise coming out of there. Now that is the perfect use of leftovers. Yeah. It's delicious. As I say, if you let that go cold, it's very portable as well. Right. So great for a lunchbox to make a change from sandwiches because we're all rather reliant on sandwiches and that's so much mm. more interesting. So there it is. And cut into small pieces. If it, once it's gone cold, it presumably goes quite solid. Quite firm, yes. And so you can then cut it into small pieces for finger food at a party. Absolutely, you, you could. No you reason not to. well in advance. Indeed. I think you so ought to try it. You've right, cooked I mean, it. You ought, to, you ought to give it a go. Wonderful. I shall do that very thing. And then we will... Uh, and then you must try yourself and I tell shall. me what I've made I it shall. I shall. I think you've done a very good job. Mmm. Mmm. It's absolutely delicious. Lots of good things. You can taste all the ingredients. Mmm. That's absolutely delicious. Mmm. And there you go. All from leftovers. Oh, wonderful. And a few eggs. Hurrah! Oh, well this done. Is a brilliant start. Thank you very much indeed. It's my pleasure. Extremely good news. I shall um, practice this and my wife will be astonished. Well, Thank hurrah, and no more burns. <laughs> and no more burns, <laughs> with a bit of luck. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I hope you enjoyed the show. It was enormous fun doing. Now, if you'd like to visit us on Facebook and Twitter, please do. We'll be uploading content every week and a full 45-minute show at the end of every month. If you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we'll keep you informed of progress. I look forward to seeing you next month. <laughs>